Uh, first, thanks to Free Press for pulling this together. Um, we're excited about what you're going to do as the uh, the president here, um, and look forward to a great contribution in this discussion. I'm going to stay at more of a meta level. I'll show a few things that we're up to, um, but I I have some reflections that I'd like to share, um, especially around this ongoing question of how do we protect um, the institution of journalism? How do we um, support public broadcasting in this country, and how do we collaborate effectively? How do we drive innovation? There's a long list of stuff that we're supposed to be doing. And I, I think we can lose track quickly of, well, what are the key elements? That, what's, the, what's the essence of this thing? Like, what's the, what's the elevator pitch? Um, it takes a long time sometime to get to that. Um, I don't have it yet, but I may get to it in the next three and a half to four minutes, which I'm going to try to keep those two, because I'm assuming there's going to be some discussion. Great. We want to hear from you. We care. Um, first of all, uh, America, the USA, likes a winner, right? I mean, like, we are really a confused and, and challenged country right now. Um, we're going through a very rough patch. And it's, I think, visible not only in Occupy Wall Street, it's visible in the Tea Party. It's visible in the country. You know, those are just expressions. But um, social scientists uh, have the GSS, which is the long, longest running, sort of deepest database of what do Americans think, right? And last year, 8% um, uh, of the country identified as lower class. Um, that's the highest number since they started counting after the Great Depression. Um, we also saw the, I didn't know they asked this question, but they asked Americans, how happy are you? And um, it went from, I think, 23% to almost a third uh, of Americans saying they were not happy. Um, they were unhappy. Uh, and that doesn't seem like, eh, six or seven percentage points, bad economy, okay. But that number hasn't actually moved since 1972. So in one year, off the cliff, uh, and this is thousands of data inputs, thousands of Americans reporting. So we're in a really, really rough time right now as a country. And public media is not spared, obviously. Lots of um, the debate around what is the role of, of the public in this country? What's the role of our infrastructure? Uh, how good is our infrastructure? Um, you know, it's like the question around education, innovation, and reform. Uh, yeah, it sounds good in Washington, but when you go to the PTA meeting, your, your choices seem pretty limited, right? And usually, you get all the parents of the first meeting show up at the third PTA meeting, and there's like the seven of us, you know, standing around and like, who's going to go fix the toilet and who's going to, you know, water the garden on Wednesday nights? Um, it can be really boring to try to do good stuff. And when we talk about innovation, we're subtly also saying, don't bore us, please. I don't want to be bored. God help me, I don't want to be bored, especially if I'm broke. So um, why do we see so much adoption of, of mobile? Uh, why have certain kinds of formats won in the entertainment space over the last several years? Um, why does reality television continue to thrive? Um, I think that uh, this personalization and also in your hands um, sort of drive that technology has us on is immensely challenging to people who want to produce credible news on an ongoing basis, right? How many things can you chase and still do your job? Well, the BBC does phenomenally well. Um, and public broadcasting, I actually think, does really well, and I'm counting the whole ecosystem in here, some of which is up here at the table, and many of, of, of the great things happening you'll never learn about, because they happen in local communities. Um, so I think that there's a basic tension between those things. It's like, yeah, you, know, you go talk to a journalist who's likely or has won a Pulitzer. Uh, they spend a lot of time thinking about what's changed, obviously, in their job, but their job is still their job. So we, I think framing the conversation in a way that's manageable, so we're not trying to do everything at once all the time, I think is a big problem that we have. Because we always started with like, well, uh, how am I going to make everybody happy? Yeah, that's too complicated. Um, and when you go to do the kind of innovation work in an organization that is so important, and this happens an organization at a time, a team at a time, a person at a time, right? You could probably do a quick scan of public media companies and say, show me the innovators inside of your shop. Who are they? And do they get to work together on an ongoing basis? Do they get to connect and collaborate across the system? And how much air is in the building? Do you open the windows? And it's not just going out to meet people, but bringing people in who can actually do things. Because that's another sort of, there's a weird delta out there between our aspirations and people who get stuff done. Right? And it's an enormous challenge to find the people who get stuff done and have them work together.
because a lot of times getting stuff done is like your head is down and I'm just doing my thing. Please don't bother me. I don't want to go to a meeting. I want to innovate. So leave me alone. So getting that kind of socialization in and out of, of the system is really important, right? We've had a good run in public broadcasting. Uh, some CPV folks are here. They've made some really smart investments. Uh, each one of us up here has been heavily invested in uh, and our organizations by CPB, and there's results there. There's measurable results. So we know how to spend um, the federal funding really well. We do a great job with that. Uh, could there be more? Sure. But do we have a responsibility? Are we accountable for the money that we are getting right now? Absolutely. I stand on our record, and I'm willing to defend that in any number of ways. Um, could we do more? Absolutely. And we've got to figure out how to do that. I think one of the key um, sort of concepts at a high level also, when you think about innovation, um, you know, there's antibodies in an organization, right, that when something new happens, uh, they try to kill it off, right? That's a natural response. And antibodies are good. It's why humans are alive today, right, because we fight off germs. But a lot of times an innovation occurs, and we're not sure if it's a rash or if it's really cool in the future of life on Earth. So being able to sense and talk about and socialize and accept that sometimes we're not going to be sure what it is at the beginning, but you have to stay invested in it, and you have to build it, and you have to do stuff. You can't just innovate and walk away. It's like, yeah, you can have a good-looking baby, but let me talk to that kid when he's in middle school. Is he good? Like, is this kid solid? Yeah, okay, great, you did your job, right? So you've got to be willing over time to grow and mature this thing. We have a lot of that maturity in the system, and when I see things like what Knight has done in terms of funding innovation that is really largely outside of the system, I think that there's a way for these two communities to blend. And it's our job to make that blend possible in enough time to save the planet and to have USA win something. We've got to frame this in terms of America's going to win something here. Because otherwise, people don't tend to tune in, especially when they're uh, having economic troubles. Um, Josh, can we go to uh, the uh, after the prison riot? Uh, anyone from the state of California? Wow. Okay. One. Okay. We got a couple. Um, the prisons in California are one of the biggest, stickiest, thorniest, most complicated problems that any democracy has ever had to confront. It eats up an enormous part of the state budget. There are enormous implications for our small, medium, and large communities around sentencing policies. It's a mess. It's a tough one, right? And it doesn't divide cleanly on. Uh, conservatives and liberals. This is just a messy state to local to household issue in the state of California. Uh, when there are things that happen in the prison, they tend to be reported on in very simplistic ways because it's so complicated, it's hard to get into detail. But one of the big problems is overcrowding, right? And what is that doing inside of the, the prisons? And the California is in trouble now with the U.S. Supreme Court around those conditions. A couple years ago, there was a prison riot. And it was reported as a race riot. But how do you get underneath that very top line chapter heading to really talk about what the issues are inside of a prison? Well, eight years ago, American Public Media started uh, building a platform called Public Insight Network, which uh, basically connects knowledgeable citizens, experts in something, to newsrooms that want to deepen and diversify and improve their reporting. So when we talk about issues, we don't like to go to pundits. We like to go to people who know what they're talking about because they have experience in that. They are professionals in that. They may be researchers. They could be cultural experts, any range. But we like to bring people into the process so that we're not going to the usual suspects over and over again. So it started in uh, our Minnesota Public Radio newsroom. It spread to Marketplace. Today it's in 60 newsrooms. And there are 130,000 citizen sources in this network. And when we go after an issue, or one of our partner newsrooms go after an issue, um, they use the network to recruit and access these citizen experts. And they range from members of the National Academy of Sciences to you know, PTA dads and moms. In this case, um, we wanted to go into the actual story from the prisoner side also. Uh, from people who work at the prisons, from communities that are affected by prisons because they're in their backyards and they're the job creators there. Uh, one of them, a mom of a prisoner, uh, spoke back to us because we asked, hey, we're doing reporting. We need to, we need to ask you guys if you know something about this, share. Um, she raised her hand and said, you need to look at the conditions, the overcrowding. In one dormitory that blew up, it was like three to one over what it should have been. Um, and the reporter and the analyst, the public insight analyst at Southern California Public Radio, um, you know, with the help of these sources, actually, um, and social workers, got into the prison and had prisoners also respond to these queries that we were writing. 
So we had prison pr professionals, we had professors, we had community members, we had prison guards, we had uh, you know, prison families, and we had prisoners. And now our database of people who are related to the prison issue in California is probably approaching 1,000 people. Right? And it's feeding all kinds of other reporting downstream from there. So that's the basic premise told through a story. Josh, can I throw you a curveball? Yep. Can you go to budgethero.org? Mm -hmm. Has anyone played Budget Hero? All right, a few people in the audience. You guys win a t-shirt. Um, we built a game uh, in partnership with the Wilson Center for International Scholars here in DC that allows players to actually play through the federal budget to try to balance it. Right? And at the beginning of the game, you can kind of pick what are your priorities. Hey, I'm a Tea Partier, and I want, I'm really strong on national defense, and I care about Social Security. So you can badge against those, and then you try to balance the budget while also maintaining your priorities. And it's kind of like a schoolhouse rock kind of deal. Um, and, and people play through it, and you, you know, it's what you find out quickly, it's really hard to balance the federal budget. Um, so if you just kind of skip through there, Josh, we're not going to require you to actually successfully balance the budget. Um, we just passed our one millionth play on this game. We updated it around the debt ceiling crisis and uh, are approaching 200,000 plays on the new version. Um, we invite people into the network through this, using games, saying, hey, you're interested in the federal budget. What do you if know If you about? ever wanted to control where your tax dollars go, 